yeah. Hug a Sound podcast. I'm Evan Stone. I'm Chuck Schilling. And you are David Kennedy. David, David Kennedy. Kennedy. Cool. Good to have you here, man. Good to have we you too. just just met uh, a few weeks ago at the Bop Stop. We uh, we even had Gabe uh, that runs the Bop Stop in here just a oh, couple yeah. episodes ago. Gabe Great is one guy. of my uh, local music heroes. Oh yeah, I love him. When Dude. he started explaining all that he actually does, he's one of my heroes now too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. He, I'm, I'm amazed by the kind of work, the amount of work, the dedication, the commitment to both jazz and the mission of the music uh, box or the music settlement and the uh, musicians who come in there and play their music. I mean, he's a great host. He's a, I've he always closer? felt, felt yeah, right. um, really welcome and uh, excited to be in there. I've recorded a bunch of records in the Bop Stop um, with right. different area artists. It's a nice room to record in, really good acoustics. And they have a really nice microphone collection in there, too. Oh. And they have a really good piano, which is one of the harder yeah. things to find when you're trying to make uh, records with pianos, is where is there a good-sounding room in town with a really nice piano? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah speaking of that, I remember recording an album and um, having a few piano parts written f- um, with this band. And then we uh, we chose Suma Studios uh, in Painesville. Another beautiful piano mm-hmm. and a when really we... spectacular room. So we, we saw that, and we got there and tried it out. I'm like, whoa. And so uh, there was also an antique B3 with a Leslie speaker mm-hmm. there. So I um, ended up writing keyboard or organ parts for every song. And oh, that's awesome. Just because that was there, we had that resource. That's the inspiration mm-hmm. of having it there in a, in a space like that and having, the I think, that setting, the, that it's out in the woods, that it's... Yeah, you know this natural mm-hmm. setting. It's it's very much like a retreat or a, yeah, you know, almost a resort or. Yeah. or uh, <laughs> I like that kind of stuff. I've done a bunch of records where I go out to some place with a band and we, getting together in a space for several days in a row or just with us, particularly a secluded space is like, you get that bu- bunker mentality and it gets you writing or yeah. gets you open enough with your people to trust that yeah. the process to each other to make it happen cuts out distractions uh i plan on going back out to suma to do some stuff this year uh bringing some of the artists that i'm working with in the music incubator program out there cool uh what program so i work for cleveland rocks past present and future among several other things i do and that's a nonprofit on the east side of cleveland dedicated to the improvement of the overall outlook for cleveland area music um past present future history um, preservation of, of Cleveland music, um, advocating for artists, providing resources now, planning for the future, promoting, uh, making ri- rising tide lifts all boats in music. What can we do to help develop infrastructure for a music destination place? How can we do some of the things that you know they're talking about with Listen CLE, who we've been talking about, um, where we're promoting local artists, we're raising profile, raising awareness, and uh, raising our national presence in music here, as well as helping people on the ground in the city. So um, one of the programs there is a music incubator program where I offer microloans in a uh, community-based incubator. It's a roundtable kind of group with connectors who act as advisors and support people and applicants who are looking for funding for a certain kind of project. Um, People are coming to ask for help buying equipment or paying for advertising or promotion, web design, um, pressing records, making merch, uh, all all different kinds of stuff that they want to do to advance their music. And so we help them with the process of planning, budgeting, um, forecasting, what's the results of this are going to be. And we offer loans of up to $2,000 at 1% interest. And it's a year-long process for the people who get involved. So they stay with this group and meet twice a month throughout their project and talk to each other about the progress they're making, ask for support and network. And it's really a a community-building exercise in a lot of ways. Where's the money come from? Money comes from donations. Uh, it's a nonprofit. Wow. We have an active um, uh, campaign going on right now to raise funds. Um, just last week, we were awarded a $5,000 donation from the 10,000 Watts of Holy Light Foundation, which is Michael Stanley's foundation. Wow. And we're one of the first to um, 
grantees from that organization. So along with private individual donations, we've um, written some grants and got some support from Cuyahoga Arts and Culture and from the Ohio Arts Council. And then most of the support at those come from individual donors. All right. And we encourage people to look us up on Cleveland Rocks PPF.org. That's Cleveland Rocks PPF, past, present, future.org. And click the donation button. Uh, check out our events calendar. Check out the artist resources if you want to learn more about the incubator. And we have a huge list of artist resources in terms of um, what studios are in the area, uh, what radio stations, podcasting companies. Have you guys listed yourself up there yet? Uh, we haven't. No. All right. You're welcome to, and I'll give you yeah, the link. But absolutely. So check, everybody check it out you know, <laughs> next week to see. Well, by the time this airs, you probably yep. will be up there. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. There's uh, publications, education, government resources, booking, backline, and ev- equipment rental, um, T-shirt printers and apparel manufacturers locally. So a lot of stuff a band or an artist would need to get stuff done, put on a show, launch an album, record, make a video, hire a photographer, um, reach out to a booking agency, reach out to venues, a whole big list of venues, local festivals, stuff like that. All right. That's fantastic. Cool. That's like everything on one website. <laughs> yeah. We're really trying to be a hub for um, area music industry stuff and also connect with all these other programs like Listen CLE and the Cleveland Music Industry Conversations where we met and provide support for other organizations and um, be really in that connectivity mode in the scene around town. Excellent, excellent. Cool. <laughs> How you like the beer? I love it. Great. This is the Collision Bend Brewery Sea Town. Yeah, IPA. I love the name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they uh, they provided this for yeah. us. Uh, Cleveland beer, Cleveland brewery on the Cleveland podcast. So we're keeping it all Cleveland as much as we can. Yeah. So yeah, thanks, delicious. Collision Bend, yeah. in the East Bank of the Flats. I paddled around uh, Collision Bend on my kayak this summer. Oh, that's that's perfect. I used to work at the uh, the other brewery down there, Thirsty Dog. Okay. And uh, yeah. they saw that all the time. The patio is like right on the river there. Yeah. yeah. They've since uh, shut down. They, yeah. They're going to change to something else. They're not going to be a brewery anymore. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Great spot down there. Yeah. Nice spot for a beer. Yeah. <laughs> or drive a jet ski or paddleboard. <laughs> Yeah, I have a couple kayaks, so I usually drive down to where the uh, Merwin's Wharf is and uh-huh. put it in there and paddle around downtown for a while. Yeah, to cool. the to the lake and back up and around the bend and stuff. Yeah, it can so get a little just... rough if you go out, but yeah, <laughs> oh, kayak, oh yeah. <laughs> cool. So, what do we got on the agenda today? We can't. We come in here with a uh, an open book, so. We do, man. Uh, yeah. Um, you from Cleveland? I'm from Cleveland. Grew up in Cleveland Heights. Moved cool. to Florida Keys when I was 10 years old. Lived on an island for five years down there. Then moved back to Cleveland again, and I've been here ever since. Cool. So um, you said you are like recording things. Are you like a, a producer or a sound engineer? What... Yeah, both. Um, I do a lot of producing and recording and mixing and editing and on-location recording and equipment setup and installation i do a lot of studio consulting for people so i go to studios and go through what they have and help them optimize it and make it work i've I've been in audio education for like 16 years now and i ran for 10 years the recording arts and technology program at tri-c or cuyahoga community college which has the gorgeous studios there there's six studios in this building called the Jill and Tommy LaPuma Center for Creative Arts. Wow. Um, I was involved in getting that space up and running and filling it full of students and um, putting installing these new studios and, and then ran it for 10 years. And uh, this past summer, I just left that job. Um, the college offered a buyout to anybody who'd been there over five years. And I looked at the music industry landscape. I looked at the working landscape. And the whole, just everything from the pandemic and, and, you know, the nature of work changed, the nature of the work environment and the nature of uh, higher education. And so I was like, this is a a good time for me to make a change. This is a good time that, this is the 
probably the most momentous time in my life, actually, that to do anything, to anything different. Yeah, absolutely. So I took uh, a buyout, and one of the beautiful things about it was I was a full-time administrator, a program manager. I was on a staff there for a long time, but I also had a part-time job as a college professor there. And uh, the adjuncts, the part-timers, were who also had full-time jobs that took the bio were allowed to stay on and teach. And I'm like, I can stay oh, with the students perfect. in the best oh. part of the education environment, the classroom, the laboratory. So I teach in the studio this semester every Saturday a class called Recording Lab 2, which is um, I'm teaching people to be producers. Mm -hmm. The idea is you choose a song, a cover song, and we have the list of songs that have like... Um, uh, rock Hall uh, or Rock Hall inductees or Grammy nominees is pretty much our or Grammy winners is our, our criteria for these songs. And we have songs that students can cover, like "California Love" by Tupac and Dr. Dre, to "25 or 6 to 4" by Chicago, to um, "Hurt" by Johnny Cash, or "Love Song" by The Cure, or "Next Year" by the Foo Fighters. There's a, a variety of stuff from the 70s to modern and the students pick a song with their lab partner choose a style or genre and then create an arrangement and book musicians and record in the studio edit drum sample replacement timing correction pitch correction vocal tuning producing mixing delivering a finished product all while meeting with me for production meetings along the semester and then I incorporate uh, the kind of entrepreneurial business aspect to it by having the students uh, generate invoices for the work they're doing in the studio and bill me as the quote unquote oh. Oh. record executive producer, record label. And they're going through the process of, in many cases, producing their first song. And it's a very structured, step by step process for them. We do one instrument at a time. And I really feel that they can take that and use it as they go along forward to working for themselves and producing their own projects. Yeah. Um, I, I think that if somebody wants to be a producer here in town, they can be a producer uh, by having a plan and being able to create a budget. If you can work with people, schedule time, and get the money in place to do X, Y, and Z, just put your mind to it and communicate with people. You can... You can be a producer out there in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. I think most of the studios in town, you can come in and um, use a staff engineer. You don't even have to know technology. You could be a, use a staff engineer at one of these studios mm -hmm. in town with an idea and a song and bring in a, a singer. You can arrange for a backup musician, side players. And I also think nowadays you can do all that online um, with sites like Fiverr and Air Gigs out there. People can produce anything from with musicians from all over the world from their home. Oh, you, wow. yeah. you can send out stuff to a drummer in Turkey and a um, you know, bass player in Japan and, and you know, uh, somebody in California singing on your tracks and then maybe you write a rap just to be over in the middle of it. Yeah. Oh, wow. I did not know that existed. Yeah, I've seen some collaborations like that. Um, there's a, uh, like a Zeppelin tribute that's uh, People's Front of Zeppelin. And I think, like, one guy's over in the Middle East playing guitar. The drummer's in Chicago. It, it's a pretty cool setup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Air Gigs is a pretty new site. I mean, I, there's a number of famous people on it though, offering their services in session work and mixing and stuff. Fiverr's more, I think, uh, vast and um, it's all over the place in terms of quality level, experience level, costs. Yeah and stuff like you can get <coughs> I, I bought sure. verses for like five dollars to put on a track and um i've had people edit video for me and create video compositions from stock footage for like forty dollars or something but then there's people who have better reputations on there more involved stuff it's it's a cool platform and, and i'm seeing some uh, interesting commercial releases with that kind of yeah. I'm producing over the internet kind of approach. Yeah, I think uh, that was that what George from the Sublets used for producing their video for oh, yeah, the Fallout right. was mm -hmm. through Fiverr, I believe, and it was a woman from Finland. Or... Was it Finland? It was somewhere. Somewhere. Like oh, <laughs> I think it might have been Finland. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, fantastic video. Um, really stood out, and yeah, it, it's it's making the whole world a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. Well, um, with your 
your class that you teach, do you, um, what software do you have them use? Or do you let Pro them tools. pick? Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, there's Pro Tools installed in all the computers in the school, and it has the same bundle of plugins and add-ons in each one, so students can go from room to room, station to station, and move their hard drive around and oh, cool, cool. produce. And then we also offer um, financial aid for students to buy software and equipment and stuff oh. like that, so Pro Tools being required, they can go to the school bookstore and buy it, or they can use its financial aid support. Right, cool. And which that's a nice thing about the school. I want to, I mean, I want to let everybody know, uh, Cuyahoga Community College, yeah. that they have like this tuition assurance plan that it's like, it's the cheapest place to learn what I learned, period. And it's the, one of the most well-outfitted colleges programs in the country. And uh, students can transfer from there to Berkeley College of Music, one of the best music schools in the world. Right on. Community and get a bachelor in um, music production is one of the options for them. And that's what I did. I went to school where I ended up working. Uh, and back in 2001, I, I went to recording school there, and I fell in love with it. I hadn't had a lot of experience before going in, but I just dove in and have been into that for since then, <laughs> all the time. Cool. Yeah, I did a uh, community college uh, recording program at uh, Lakeland, and mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was fantastic going through the stuff. Um, I like the idea though that where you had recreating the songs, um, where the students um, were did they have the freedom where they could kind of make it their own as you far can as the production, your okay, style or genre. You pick what style or genre you're doing, or whether you want to do it kind of straight up. So do you uh, get to see a lot of uh, students coming up with ideas that you would have never thought of as far as recording? Oh yeah. And, I'm yeah, sure that's really I mean, rewarding. I, the the creative allowing people to have the creativity within a structure where they're uh, advancing the project, meeting learning outcomes, goals, um, and developing skills is super important. The creativity gets the energy going, gets the juices flowing, gets their inspiration up to to tackle more challenging work, and. Um, I remember one of my students did like a death metal cover of Hotline Bling. It was very heavy. They had some like, uh, you know, super heavy drums, guitars, vocals and stuff. And um, right now one of my students is doing a pop punk cover of Cure's Love Song. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've heard a lot of different versions of stuff over the years. And some of the students are like, I'm going for it pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the what was Foo Fighters next year uh, made like? Oh, I I, can't, I don't know if I've had a student in my class. I've only taught this this class uh, a couple of times, and I don't think I've had somebody do next year for me. Um, but I also teach in the fall our capstone class, which is the portfolio class, and that's where the students who are about to graduate are doing their final recordings, their top level stuff. And at that point, I feel like I'm more coaching than teaching. And, I, I see all the creativity come out then because they have to produce a variety of different projects, including songs that they do in the studio. They could be original or cover. They can bring in their friends. They can record themselves, whatever. And um, So I, I see a lot of, of the creativity in that. And I've seen a lot of bands in town and people from bands in town go through that and record their stuff, and now they're out playing and stuff. Oh, that's very cool. cool. Anyone we might know or head through here? Well, my... Um, Recently, the drummer of a group called Spirit of the Bear, who I think uh -huh. is doing some really cool stuff. And Youngstown cool. guys, right? Right. Uh, uh, some of the they went to college and someone went to college in Columbus. Someone went to college up here. But yeah, they, I think they're from over there originally. And um, we just had the Labber brothers in here. This hat that I had. Nice. Right? They, they were Labber, talking Labber, about Labber. Spirit of the Bear, who I and uh, I think I've been following them for a few years. And yeah, I love cool, their videos. They're uh -huh. they're really cool. For sure. Uh, they're putting high level uh, thought and work and quality coming out of that, and it's funny too. They they got a good sense mm -hmm. of humor, and they're pretty. Uh, they would fit on the 107.3, the Jenny here in town. I think the modern pop indie rock yeah. songs station. Uh, I didn't know there was a radio station. Yeah, they're like an alternative kind of station. Oh, cool. 107.3. 107.3. Oh, that's not the wave. No, oh. <laughs> the wave. Okay, so I worked at Tri-C for a number of years, and the Jazz Fest was a big thing. The Wave was a big sponsor for the Jazz Fest for years, and they had a 
big following. And at one point, I, you guys ever watched the video on YouTube about the history of the way the history of smooth jazz? No. Vox has a cool history of smooth jazz video. I think it's on the Vox website and on on YouTube. But it talked about the, at one point there were all these the waves around the country. It was like a chain okay. of them. It was smooth wow. jazz used to be a bigger thing. And for our jazz fest. Um, Smooth jazz would sell out. The smooth jazz show would sell out every year. They'd sponsor a show and, you know, have somebody come in, um, like uh, who who was somebody? Uh, I gotta think of who was on those smooth jazz. Boney James and I don't think we ever had Kenny G, but uh, you know, mm-hmm. but the wave is no longer. And a lot of people in town were fans of that kind of music and. Um, I used to listen to that when I was driving. I don't listen to radio much, yeah. so I, I I didn't even like I didn't even know that they were. It's how gone. long has that been? It's gone. <laughs> Years already. Yeah. Oh, man. So the Jenny put this thing out. Like, what's the Jenny? What's the Jenny? Yeah, what's I remember seeing the billboards. Yeah. Campaign? And it's it, it's uh it started out and it was a lot of indie pop rock stuff, and now it's more. Uh, popular alternative stuff. Cool, but so they, you're saying they sprinkle I, in local? Um, no, I just think that those guys have a sound that fits in, and that, oh. that they, they have oh, yeah. a, a their sound doesn't sound that it sounds like it's ready for the radio and oh, that kind of right. fro- format. Yeah. Uh, the band Bitch Seat. Um, one of the people, Evan Searles, in that band was, like that was one of my yeah. students. <laughs> yeah. The Rusted Hearts. Um, there, I think their guitarist, uh, I think he's the guitarist. Pat Farmer was one of my students, graduates, who now is like the studio booker over at uh, Superior Sound on Superior. The Jim Wirtz place. Jim Wirtz place. I just recorded a song in there with uh, Jim Stewart, who has just moved out of there into his own uh-huh. place in 78th Street Studios. Oh, yeah, I saw he was moving on to his own thing. Yes, cool. mm-hmm. so he's got a new place in 78th Street Studios. I love working with him. I've worked with him on a couple hundred songs. Every year he volunteers to record the Tri-C High School Rock Off, Battle yeah. of the Bands. I was a judge this past weekend at the Rock Off, and um, all the finalists get to record. And since we were sponsoring it at Tri-C, um, we give the opportunity to each of the finalists to come in and cut a, a song in the studio. And Jim cool. uh, would work with my students and really quickly and efficiently record, you know, a song, two songs a day, and 12 songs over the course of like four weeks, and put out a compilation at the final exam, the final round of the competition. That always comes out good, too. I remember hearing that. I worked with him on a a full length and two EPs with a band called New Moon Rising, and he was showing me that stuff. I'm like, well, that's really, really fucking cool. Like, these are high school kids? Yeah. 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 (laughs) It's Talent great level's high, that. quality's high. Jim's great. I love working Jim with is, him. Jim is great. Yeah. So I, I've done a couple records in his studio, and when he was over at Superior Sound, done a couple records in there. Once with the piano in there. That mm-hmm. They have a pretty nice Yamaha. Um, I remember um, him mixing. We didn't record with him a full length, but he mixed like at his house like, um, and before he moved to Superior. That, okay. that was pretty cool. Nice. Like, he, he had this open apartment thing and like but then his setup was just so professional like right in right there you ever been there when he i was, was still in, his, in his house no i i was at his studio across the street that was in the daffy dan building mm-hmm. before they moved over to superior so i've been in there and the other one mm-hmm. i knew him before then but i didn't go to his studio we had worked in the studios at the school at the college yeah the the daffy dan uh building is where where I worked with them too. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I've been in there. 2016 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That oh, was a nice guy. big space. Huge. Yeah. I think we used the piano there. Cool. Nice. <laughs> I get intimidated by those nice pianos. Like I'm just starting out. Uh-huh. So I see them and I'm like, I don't want to touch. You yeah. do. You should. <laughs> I've got that Yamaha over <laughs> no, there. Just go for it. Uh, my wife and I were, uh, her work is based out of uh, Helsinki in Finland okay. near the Steinway store there. She's like, you want to go in? I'm like, no, I'll just look through the windows. Dude, when you start playing that, like, it immediately gives you more confidence because that tone is like nothing you've ever played before. Like, even if you're playing sloppy, like, oh, it's never sounded like this. Like, this is real. The, the tone will be fantastic no matter what. Just mm-hmm. hold down the sustain pedal. Yeah. <laughs> it intimidated the hell out of me. Yeah. I was, I backed out, but. Cool. Um, 
can you tell us about um, how Cleveland Rocks PPF uh-huh. got started? Cindy Barber from the Beachland Ballroom has been helping a lot of bands over the years with um, all kinds of stuff. One of the stories she told me that inspired that she said inspired her to get this nonprofit started was um, the Black Keys did their first ever show at the Beachland, and mm-hmm. they kind of had that as home. And she was very close with them coming up and did a lot of help to support them with planning tours and promotion and getting up a level and and you know that makes her feel and think that there is more potential like that around cleveland that with the right kind of support there are more bands that can have a national presence and um that the talent level here has always been great and that there's stuff we can do to help people connect to the industry that is going to make it and people here to connect to the industry locally and our local industry to connect nationally that can make a big difference and the big plans with that is going forward um, using the buildings we own next door to the uh, Beachland, the Space Rock Gallery and the Music Saves to um, create space with support for musicians. So right now I have a, uh, uh, we just had a gallery show in the Space Rock Gallery and we'll have several more this year. This show had been about um, uh, pictures of artists, band photos, images um, from groups in Cleveland in previous eras and new groups where we had a, a workshop uh, from Cleveland that Cleveland Rocks put on um, about artists writing bios and we offered free headshots to the people who attended and band photos in and, and a local uh, pho- photography gallery, Bridget Caswell's gallery and she took photos of the artists were showing them in this gallery show along with people uh, all the way back to the 70s from bands from Cleveland and um, you know going forward we're gonna be doing more of these workshops and using that space to host events um, opening up the music saves store again to have all Cleveland area and local music in there and merchandise as well as hosting in stores and shows in there. That's a big idea. I like that. This summer we're having a concert series in the outdoor stages and around the art galleries in the neighborhood. There's several galleries down there in in Collinwood on Waterloo Road. And um, there's a a stage called the Tower Stage in front of uh, like Six Shooter Coffee at um, 156th and Waterloo, right at the corner. There's a stage there and a big tower. So it's called the Tower Stage. I put it on Google. It has a Google place now, so everybody can find it. Um, we're going to have free music out there this summer, and we're going to be live streaming two bands at each event. And um, we're going to have. Is this the Waterloo Arts Fest? It, it will go up through that. The Waterloo Arts Fest will be at the end of August, and there will be one of our stages going with bands that are performing and will be live streaming from there. But this will be a whole series of concerts starting from May until uh, oh, the end okay. of the year. This is something that's been supported by the Ohio Arts Council and the um, Cuyahoga Arts and Culture, our arts-supporting nonprofits here in the county and the state. Cool. And who do you have to follow to keep up with that? Or You can um, go to the Cleveland Rocks Past, Present, and Future website, clevelandrocksppf.org. Link below. And check yeah, out below. the calendar on there. There's a events calendar on there, and we have a – active Facebook presence. I think there's also an active Instagram presence, Cleveland Rocks, past, present, and future. Um, Excuse me. And then we'll be posting the events on the Cuyahoga Arts and Culture um, calendar for the whole community. There's a a large arts calendar that all the organizations that get support from Cuyahoga Arts and Culture put the events that they've provided funding or assistance for up on that page too. Cool, cool. And you can... um uh, for aspiring bands, you can find information on how to like, submit to your incubation program or to, to perform in these shows. The incubator has uh, an inquiry form on the website, clevelandrocksppf.org. At the top of the page, it says artist resources, and under that is that list of businesses I talked about in the music industry, and then there's a link for the music incubator there, and you can 
put in and uh, click on it and put in an inquiry if you want more information. I host once a month meetings for new people um, over Zoom where I can explain the program, answer questions, and people will see if it's right for them. It's not going to be for – the music incubator isn't going to be for everybody. We're offering up to $2,000, which is a small amount in many cases, mm-hmm. uh, as a loan at 1% interest. And we're asking people to stay with us for a whole year through two meetings a month and participate in this kind of group discussion about your projects and other people's projects and music community. Um, there are resources for getting funding around town, and sometimes we can help people find those other resources. And some people are participating in the Music Incubator, not as applicants, but I'm looking for more people who wish to be connectors or advisors, and they don't necessarily have to be from music professions. We think in this structure that unlikely connections are important, that people connecting from different backgrounds and different uh, professional fields um, so not everybody on our connector group is, is a music professional, but many of them are. And then um, some other people may think that, well, instead of taking a loan for $2,000, I need help with something else. Here in town, there's a, a bank that supports musicians called the Noteworthy Credit Union, and Noteworthy provides loans for instruments and tour vans and things like that, so oh, larger wow. dollar amounts. And um, it, sometimes What's that called again? Noteworthy Credit Union. Noteworthy Credit Union. All yeah, right. it's, it's a credit union. A lot of the Cleveland Orchestra musicians bought their instruments through Noteworthy. Oh, wow. You know, at, or using loans from Noteworthy. Um, and yeah, then you need some, top-notch instruments for that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, like, uh, how much is a bassoon? I have I no know. idea. I, I'm, I would guess at least, at least $4,000. That's what I'm 4, guessing, yeah. For, I mean, some really good ones, they get up to ten, twenty. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's like in a car loan or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the other instruments are, are especially vintage and stuff are, are crazy. So that, I mean, that might be, it might be monetary resources that are, people are putting together. I have one person in our, in our incubator group who um, isn't putting forth a project proposal, but is utilizing the networking in the group. And she started something. She was looking for a space for events, and it was a variety show she wanted to do with game show aspects and um, with music and a house band. And so it was like a lot of different things going on through the night, and she was looking for a venue to have that kind of um, event in. And we helped her find something in the neighborhood, and it's, she's hosting these events in the what's called the Gatewood Home Share um, in the, like the Lakeshore District there near North Collinwood and Euclid border. And um, other people are hanging around for a good amount of time waiting till it, the time is right to propose their projects. So they're ans- asking more questions, gathering information, networking with other people and, and supporting other people and then maybe presenting an, an idea later on down the line. So that's it's it's been a really interesting journey with that. I mean, it's it's such variety of what people want to do, and but people can reach out, and I'll I'll sit with them online and explain what's going on, and that those programs, and then if they have questions about other stuff, maybe I can refer them to other resources. Yeah. All right. You got a lot of people coming from uh, you know from outside of music and different um, skill sets. Do you have any holes you're looking to fill? Any skill sets that you're really looking to to help push us forward? I don't know that I'm, I'm, I've been targeting any in particular um, area. I'm, I'm very open to having discussions. Uh, recently, I had somebody come to our group who's new to Cleveland, reached out to me via Facebook and said, you know, I'm coming in Cleveland. I'm new here. I was in music in the last city I lived in. I work in the uh, development, like uh, construction, large-scale construction development field, but I've always had a passion for music and I... Uh, I want to see what I can do to get involved, and and uh, we were just having a conversation. I think I originally thought he was contacting me about, you know, hey, can you produce my record or something like that. And then he was saying maybe I was going to teach him, and I'm like, well, why don't I get you involved in this, and then you can meet people because there's producers in here, and there's musicians and engineers, and you'll 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 get plugged into the scene really quick. And so that was great. Um, so it was totally some music background, but not in the professional yeah. sense. Very cool. Yeah. 
Um, any, like, um, what you would consider success stories out of the uh, incubator? Our first loan went to Corey, G- Corey Grinder and the Playboy Scouts. Uh-huh. They are a honky-tonk type old school country band, okay. country and western. I've seen them perform. Yeah. yeah. Pretty authentic. Mm-hmm. Very authentic. <laughs> and um, they wanted to go on tour and they wanted some help to expand to a few more dates. And so they put together a plan and a budget and we got them the loan. And with that, that Corey, the band leader, wanted to be able to pay his musicians a better wage on the road and and be able to reach more audiences. Well, he ended up earning, I think, about 83% more revenue than he would if he hadn't worked with us over the course of the tour, selling, you know, that many 70-some percent additional tickets, selling 80-some percent more Mm -hmm. merch, and then uh, reaching two new markets that he'd never been to and added six dates onto his tour and beyond what he was originally planning so and that, happier bandmates on the team. happier bandmates <laughs> yeah. you know and they got to hit a recording session in the middle where they were the backup band for another singer and get paid to go into the studio oh, so excellent so it was all around uh, a big positive for him and and now he's got questions about the next tour he's doing with you know there's been so much uncertainty with tur- touring and um but he's he's somebody who's done really good and he's getting back out on the road right. and uh, recording again, and and we had uh, our second uh, awardee was his name Jay Wolf, Jay Wolf Two dot Bandcamp dot com. If you want to check him out, J W O L F E, the number two, dot Bandcamp dot com. Um, he's got a really cool voice and style. Uh, he borrowed money to to finish a record that just got finished, and they released the first two singles of it online, and he's putting it out uh, the full album very soon and um, he re-released a cassette that had sold out over that time as well so he's very active planning his tours and now we have a new round of um, he actually put it out on cassette he put an album out on cassette all right nice. yeah people are collecting cassettes there's a great cassette uh, making place here in town called a to z audio they're over on oh. like the west side brook park area wow. I didn't know that that was still being done with it. <laughs> yeah, all. you yeah. can get like gold colored cassettes and clear <laughs> and purple and all different colors. Got to get my Walkman out of storage. Yeah, I have a, a buddy that's, you know, actually a year older than me, um, and he's back in college. And um, one of his classmates is like restoring old Walkmans. And he just, uh, the kid just bought the uh the walkman that's seen in back to the future when he puts it on his old man's oh, ears yeah. and plays van halen he paid like a thousand bucks for the that's thing, the man. that's the bright yellow one i think uh i don't think that was no i don't think that was yellow i remember the yellow yeah the, yeah, the, the yellow the action, had that like the sony action yeah, like ones locked on yeah yeah all right yeah oh it must be like it was this i think it was silver, silver. Yeah. yeah that's silver crazy i mean i yeah if you go on like a uh, reverb.com or ebay and look at <laughs> used the high-end i mean boom boxes the even some of the cheapy 90s boom boxes the plasticky ones yeah. they're going for a lot um and some of that stuff is like the aesthetic looking at the style is it you know i back then a gpx boom box was like oh man i don't want gpx i want a name brand like sony right. or panasonic panasonic was making the good stuff back then yeah you could always rely on that stuff but um Nowadays, it's like that look. And now there's all these companies doing retro look with Bluetooth, this 80s ghetto blaster with cassette player and Bluetooth, you know. And I had a car stolen back in like 2001, and I swear it was stolen because it still had a cassette deck because they recovered it like two hours later. And when I got it back, it had a, a Wu-Tang Clan cassette in there. Oh. They took out my uh, oh, my Metallica and put in Wu-Tang. <laughs> But I was all right with that. I just rolled with that for the rest of the time I had the car. <laughs> That's right. You got, you got a Wu-Tang cassette out of the deal. That's not bad. Uh, I got a cassette player in my car now. Nice. I have a Toyota Highlander, and it's like uh, 2007, I think, 2008, and it's got a cassette player and a CD player in it. Wow. Had to be like the yeah. last batch. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's great because I, I do buy a lot of cassettes from the band's. When I go to shows and bands, if they have records, I usually buy records. But if they don't have records, I'll buy tapes, and because I'm like, okay, I could play it in my car. Yeah. 
and uh, I, I love buying. I'm, I'm a over buyer of vinyl. I, I, like every show I get, sometimes I'll go see a band and they'll have, it'll be my first time seeing them, so I'll buy everything they have on record. And my wife keeps telling me, quit buying records. <laughs> my shelves are full. I don't have any more room. I Last year I, I sold a bunch of records because my shelves were full because I wanted to get more records. To, yeah. I needed room. So I, I looked at everything I had that I was like, uh, I'm not going to listen to this this year. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to listen to this next year, so I'm going to sell it. So I got rid of some stuff, but I'm back at it. I just got something in the mail today, and I got yelled at. It was some Brazilian, like, 70s funk with poetry. I've been getting into that 60s and 70s music from South America, the oh, yeah. um, chicha music and stuff like that. Have you guys oh. heard Hello 3D? They're a mm. cumbia band from here in town. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. Lava Lava Brothers Lava we're talking about. about that, that style of music. I, yeah. I don't know that, that artist. but yeah. Okay, Hello wow. 3D is uh, a very cool band from Cleveland. Some of my friends are in that band, and... Uh, I think everybody should see them. If you like dancing and danceable music, this has the rhythm and the groove, and it's a lot of fun, uh, very percolating. Cool. Uh, for record people, Record Den and Menor has, like, a lot of used records for, like, a buck a piece. Like, my wife and I pop in there every once in a while and spend 20 bucks and come home with a bunch of stuff. That's the whole cool. reason that we, uh, <laughs> she's got her childhood going on during Christmas with her Kenny Rogers Christmas that drives me up the fucking wall. <laughs> but on vinyl, uh, we'll pop in there. It's uh, Menor Avenue, like kind of across from the mall right yeah, around yeah. there. Yeah, Record Den is still famous. I mean, it's been there forever. All the record buyers know it. There's uh, uh, some record groups on Facebook that are very active talking about what they get and what they like and people always talk up the record den i have not been out there since probably the 90s yeah back when i was in high school and right out of high school i went to the record stores all the time in high school every day like my junior and senior year i was at lakewood high school and i would walk home from lakewood and go by the exchange or go the other way and go by chris's warped records and those two record stores just had great stuff and every day i'd be sifting through everything and like with, uh, back then I was buying a lot of cassettes and CDs and a lot of punk, alternative, industrial, rap, um, weir anything weird. Yeah. And, um, you know, I would go home and tape it and bring it back the next day. And they'd, <laughs> they'd give me like a dollar less or whatever for what I got if I brought it back the next day and get something else. And I was just buying tons of blank tapes and bootlegging everything. Um, but I had, you know, I, I had a voracious appetite for music. That and the Cleveland and Cuyahoga County library systems. Yeah. The library just, system, yeah. when I was, before I moved to Lakewood, which had stores and you could walk around, I lived in North Royalton in my 10th grade year. And there's... Back then, and this was 1990, there was nothing out there um, in terms of being able to go to a store, but there was a library, and the library had a computer network, and it was the old green screen, and yeah. I could search up bands and artists I knew, and I remember being astounded at how many records Miles Davis had, and Frank Zappa had, and Sun Ra had, and these older artists, I'm like, they have so many cow so i just started requesting everything that i knew and i like and pick it up and take it home listen to it tape it um and then college radio college radio in town at the same time was those were the big influence the library and college radio getting me into everything oh yeah library was huge for me too same here uh, yeah going up I, that was only like a five minute walk up the street for me and uh would put cds on hold you know mm -hmm. because I, I grew up in uh, in chardon okay and that we had to we actually had to go all the way to Menor if we yeah. wanted to buy a CD. This is like uh, yeah. even pre-Napster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, yeah, put them on hold, like wait for that call, and then like you know, burn it onto another CD or onto a tape. And, Heck, and, yeah. And, yeah. And that was uh, uh, the CDs I could get or like became like my musical influence. You know? Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, that and being North Royalton is kind of on the hill of, up there, Brexville, North Royalton, you're in like mm -hmm. the highest points of Cuyahoga County. And I could hear Akron, WZAP, the uh, w, WZIP, the Akron College Radio Station, and Cleveland State and Case Western 
from my house, so I would always wow. listen to You even to catch uh, WKSU? You know, WKSU was... I wasn't interested because it was like an NPR station. It was playing folk and folk music, and, yeah. and jazz and classical. So that wasn't really what got me. It was the rap shows, hip hop shows, and um, alternative music shows, and you know, and then weird '60s and '70s music. Any like anything that was edgy or different, or and then and anything that was sampled. You know, I was getting rap CDs and cassettes back then, and like, okay. Oh, yeah, Cool and the Gang. Oh, Sly and the Family Stone, P-Funk, and that got me into the whole funk, just absorbing everything that had been s- sampled. And, and, you know, this was, um, I graduated high school in 1993, so there was a, a golden era of hip-hop going on. Oh, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the know, Chronic like, came out in 92. And, and all, all the samples. G-funk and back and... then you could sample. Oh. Without, you know, now it's all like you have to, if you're going to sample on a record, it has to be cleared. And the people who are getting samples are only sampling from that label's catalog. And they're not even really being that creative with samples in, in terms of mainstream hip hop. Uh, I mean, there's been some really great records that are sample delic that have come out in the past couple of years, like the, um, what's that group? Avalanches. Wildflowers, avalanches. You saying they do um, samples? Yeah, it's like three thousand some samples on on that record. It, t- it took or thousands and thousands of samples. It took them forever to clear everything for that. Wow. Um, but that avalanches, wildflowers record is. I'll have to check that out yeah, for sure. Too. Like I love uh, Paul's boutique. From yeah, Beastie Boys. Sure. Because like the Dust way Brothers. they the way they put that together is mm-hmm. just fantastic. Mm-hmm. De La Soul from that era with. Yeah. Um, Prince Paul producing. Prince Paul had several records that I love that he did. Um, of course, he worked with Dan the Automator, and they made Handsome Boy Modeling School. And um, then there was like, and then Dan the Automator worked with Cool Keith and did the Doctor Octagon stuff. And then Dan the Automator made the first Gorillas record. And Prince Paul, you know, he made this awesome hip hop record that I think is super underrated that I don't think enough people know about called A Prince Among Thieves. And it was like the a hip hop opera you know it was like this uh story of um a rapper trying to come up and get a deal and him being betrayed betrayed by his best friend and it has all these great guest rappers on it, it has all kinds of people on it like pharaoh Monch and everlast it's called eight mile <laughs> <laughs> yeah well this came out way before eight mile and uh anyway but that that's one of, i think prince paul's gems but the handsome boy modeling school they did was they did a couple records of that. They're terrific. I think they're going to come out with another Handsome Boy Modeling School, Prince Paul and Dan the Automator. But anyway, that's... Those are just great, great names for acts, man. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, can you talk about... Uh, let's change gears back yeah. to what you're doing. Um, we're about to mention our sponsors here. Can you talk about... Um, Beer? Um, we, well, Collision Ben, yes. Once thank again. You, Collision Bend again. <laughs> thank you, Collision Ben. Yeah. The Sea Town is very nice. It's fantastic. It's a tasty IPA. Medium bitterness. Not super floral or juicy, but there's definitely some um, body and thickness to it. Mm-hmm. I like it doesn't stay with you. There's some yeah. of those IPAs that like you're tasting them for like a minute afterwards, mm. still like on the back. My friend was calling them juice a juice bomb. It's <laughs> <laughs> like this is too or too much, and some of them they're putting like blood orange juice in yeah. them mm-hmm. and very citrusy. No, this it's is not super citrusy. Very mm-hmm. refreshing. It's yeah. pretty classic, classic American IPA. All it's right. not the California style. That's right. Yeah, not West Coast. Um, I, I enjoy the West Coast, too. When yeah, it's sure. Too. Mm. Yeah, um, uh, Thirsty Dog Brewery. They're not Collision Ben. Sorry, Collision Ben. <laughs> that gave us the beer, but they have one called Zahu, X-A-H-O-O. You can find it in, like, Dave's Supermarkets around. And, mm-hmm. like, um, that's my favorite West Coast IP here. Thirsty Dog do the uh, Labrador Lager. Yeah, that's right. I and they have a Blood Orange IPA. That's I really like the delicious. Labrador Lager a lot, um, and I think they've become more consistent with that Dortmunder style than Great Lakes Dortmunder. I've been a longtime fan of Dortmunder. It was one of my, but it's become too inconsistent every time. I yeah, yeah, Great Lakes as they've gotten like bigger and bigger and bigger, like. It's not too bad, but the quality is like down a little bit. A it little changes. Bit. Mm-hmm. I yeah. can get a it good does. one. I can get a bad one, depending on which grocery store I go to, whether I get it on tap or what. Yeah, every every holiday season, the twelve dogs of Christmas is just a winner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Collision Ben, I I've been getting on that Kolsch. 
by them. Oh, that we had that we had them give us that one too. That's yeah, what we couldn't pronounce. How do you we pronounce that? Pronounce Kolsch. Kolsch. No, uh, the the beer. It's like they had, a, they had a weird <laughs> weird name. We could not. Yeah, we couldn't pronounce. Oh, we got yeah, a empty sure. can over there. There's, there's one oh, there's one left. Yeah, but I yeah, I'm a fan of that one. <laughs> That's a good summertime beer or end of the workday beer for sure. Yeah, it was delicious. We just couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, actually, I'm, yeah, I'm a beer fan. We, we read the wrong name. Didn't pick, I, that was one of the ones I was picked up. No, I picked up the Golden Lager. Oh, the, okay. Ken Ver... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try. I tried <laughs> last time. It was anyway, terrible. But um, I almost picked up the Kolsch, but I picked up this one instead. That's why. Pivo Current? Golden Lager. Oh, yeah. Corento Vanje. Yeah, I Corinto think that's Vanier. right. Yeah, we looked it up. I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. Cool collision, Ben. Thank you again. Did you bring this for me? Yeah, have it. Oh, yeah, that's the sure. best. Golden <laughs> lager. Um, and what were we going to ask? I was going to ask about um, the uh, other sponsors. your relationship with uh, Listen CLE. Oh, Listen CLE. I love those folks. Uh, we've been um, collaborating on ways each of us can work separately and together on improving overall music outlook in Cleveland and the playlisting they're doing, I think, is tremendous. I, w- I would encourage every local musician to go to their website, check it out, and get to know what they're doing in terms of these mood-based playlists and find something in your catalog that fits one of those mood-based playlists and really think that it fits this, the vibe. It's all about vibes with them. You know, if you got an upbeat energy song for working out or whatever, you're like, Send it to the right playlist. If Energy you have a, boost. If you have the chill one, <laughs> yeah. you know, the relaxation jam, the quiet storm, whatever. What is love? Yep. The so I think... Feel they, good. Misery I think a, loves company. <laughs> <laughs> people listening to this that are musicians that contribute to this will make this site better. Yeah, that's right. The mm-hmm. more cool, different stuff, the more variety on there, the more reason for people to come back. And I love what they're doing with trying to get these playlists into businesses around the city, mm-hmm. particularly ones aimed at the tourists coming to our downtown, our shops, our hotels, and stuff like that. They're real smart. I like the, what they're doing. They're putting a lot of work and effort into this support list and CLE because um, these people are working really hard, not just for their own music or anything, for everybody's music in Cleveland. And they just developed a new feature on their website uh-huh. for putting artist profiles up there. And it's like a mini EPK where you can have a little bit of information about you and your links and stuff. So when people are looking through these playlists and, and hear your music, they can find out more about you, check out your stuff. And then, um, as I said, they're aiming at these tourist destinations and stuff like that. And they organized all the... Uh, busking around the All-Star, All-Star game All-Star in Cleveland game, yeah. and mm-hmm. helped get dozens and dozens of musicians exposure and get paid mm-hmm. and did all the uh, coordination of scheduling and locations for them. So they're doing a lot. Um, I would plug in with that if I was putting out music in Cleveland or performing and wanted to have more opportunities. I'm all about Listen CLE. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Just good people all around busting their ass to... To bring up uh, music for everybody. Bring us up, all of us. Yeah, all of us. Yeah. The whole scene. <laughs> That's one of the things, while well, I was doing this um, music incubator program, I've heard a lot from people, is like, I want to do this to put Cleveland on the map. I want to do this to make it better for other people. And the work I'm doing is like, oh, is this pause time? We yeah. could keep talking. All right. I drained it before going. we started, but, you know. Yeah, oh, no. It's springtime. It was short last. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, to the stuff we're doing is, is, is focused on the overall music community. Workshops, networking, artist resources, funding, stuff like yeah. that. Those are all reasons that uh, we do this podcast. Yeah. So that's one of my part-time <laughs> jobs. So since I left my full-time job, I have a couple of part-time jobs. We talked about two of them. We did the... Uh, Teaching, recording, and producing, and, and working with Cleveland Rocks to advocate for the music scene and directly help musicians. And um, I also work for a nonprofit called the Kaboom Collective, which is a uh, pre-professional program that trains people in studio musicianship, um, composition, animation, uh, videography, mm. a lot of different 
aspects of content creation. And we integrate the projects with each other and, and add professional development into uh, the mix. And so what I'm doing right now, I'm their producer and recording engineer. And yesterday I was on a video shoot. Um, yesterday, uh, all day, video shoot with a band called The Accidentals. They're out of Michigan. They're a national band. They, they play 200, 250 shows a year, all touring constantly. And a 40-some piece orchestra. And we shot a video. I had recorded all the music for it. I've been... Um, working with the studio orchestra portion of the Kaboom Collective, and we meet every week in a rehearsal space at Baldwin Wallace, and I record the orchestra every week, and then I edit and mix it every week. And we're doing 10 songs with this band, The Accidentals. The Accidentals sent us scratch tracks of their songs, and for people who don't understand what scratch tracks are, it's like the guide tracks. They laid down their demo with a click or a metronome track for timing for the other musicians. And I take those and I put them into um, 45 people's headphones. And I set up all these microphones in a studio space and the musicians play along to the music that's coming in through their headphones. And then I take that and edit it and mix it and send it back to the accidentals, the band, and they go into their studio and they're listening back to everything and then they cut their keeper tracks, their final takes on top of it, and then they send it back to me to mix the finished record. Wow. Cool. And um, Is there sheet music for the orchestra Yeah, so the, our composition any... team, each of these are different teams that work together, did all these arrangements of these ten tunes for the orchestra. Is this the BW Orchestra? These. This is the Kaboom Studio Orchestra. Okay. So it's people who are in the Kaboom Collective. And then the Collective also refers to all the professionals who are involved in this training. And we have a, if you check out kaboomcollective.org, we're a nonprofit. Um, there's a lot of information on there and you can see who's in the Collective. These producers, engineers, animators, videographers, filmmakers, uh, artists, musical artists, and um, Every year we have a guest artist band com to come in and work with the musicians and then we compose music around it and record it with an orchestra. Uh, this is the first year of it, but we were planning more going forward. Um, this record with the Accidentals will be released this year. We'll release like two singles over the summer, two music videos, and then a full album release and a tour with the orchestra and the band. Oh, wow. And and so with, the, with 40 people? That's yes. Uh, that's a quite of a, uh, a thing to put together. There. Yeah, so I'm doing like um, prepping them all and, and working with the production tour manager to do all the sound stuff. And um, yesterday was kind of uh, we had some meetings around everything while we were doing this big video shoot with everybody in um, a beautiful new spa venue space here in town called the Disciples Church on. Disciples Christian Church. It's on Mayfield Road in Cleveland Heights across from Severance. And on their website, they have this, their sanctuary we're in. Bands are renting this out to have performances in it. It's gorgeous. It's big. It can seat up to 500. And it's inexpensive. And it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was great for shooting this music video yesterday. So it, was, well, it didn't cost us too much. And it was a very flexible space because it's a big open room. with a, It's an old sanctuary, giant peaked roof, and it was great fun yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we shot two music videos yesterday and started talking about the plans for the tour with all the musicians and their management, and it was a lot of fun. That sounds cool as hell. So I record mm -hmm. an orchestra every week, and I'm making this record. I did a record before with an orchestra on the Accidentals. Um, there's a song called Requiem for a Lark, and we put out a seven inch and uh, a CD and uh, music video on YouTube. So that's out there and that's kind of the vibe band with an orchestra. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. Cool. <laughs> Let's take a second and uh, thank Chuck Kaminsky. Oh, the basement trader? The basement trader. Who was yeah. responsible mm -hmm. for these microphones that we're yeah, thank talking you. through today? Thanks, Chuck. <laughs> yeah. B A S S. M-E-N-T, basements, 
you know, like, traitor. Right. Yeah. yeah. Not basement like, like slapping the basement. Like, like we go fishing base. it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like the bass, instrument. bass, like bass. It's not bassment traitor. Bassment traitor. Yeah, he's got a uh, that uh, give me that filet of fish thing on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> basement traitor. Here, take that with you. Yes, basement, basement traitor. Basement traitor. Chuck Kaminsky uh, on Chestnut Street in Paintsville, right off the highway. Oh, he's yeah, got right guitars so and he buys and sells yeah. and trades he gets and all... fixes. He fixes. That's that's the thing. There aren't enough repair people out there nowadays. Yeah, he uh, quick turnaround time, fantastic job on it, and all around great dude. I know Evan's got his bass that he's uh, playing from him. I do. Yeah, I have a bass, nice. a PV nineteen ninety something. Bass he's got a Reverb dot com yeah. store too. Yes, he does. That's right. Mm -hmm. I've he's, bought, he's on Twitter. I've bought so and much Facebook. from that guy. The snare drum that's uh, over there that doesn't match my <laughs> drum kit. It's slightly off camera. That was from Chuck Kaminsky. The amplifier that's behind the camera is from Chuck Kaminsky. And thousands and thousands more dollars that I've earned and spent with Chuck <laughs> Kaminsky were well spent. Well, I will tell people about this because I keep getting asked, where can I get a setup done? Where can I get a setup done? Chuck is fantastic. Chuck Kaminsky, yeah. Chuck Kaminsky, Perfect. the basement trader. Yep. Who we also um, get food from unrefined, unrefined CLE. Yum. Cool. One hundred percent gluten and dairy free meal prep service in Cleveland. They'll deliver right to your door within thirty five miles of downtown on unrefinedls.com. We should make them a jingle. Okay. All right. Next next podcast, we'll, have we'll one come up already. with the jingle. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I, I dig that that mm -hmm. vibe. Unrefined. 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 I've, That's right. Uh, I'm they, quite they use unrefined. local vendors for their uh, ingredients and products, and the food is always fresh, never frozen. They uh, they cook it right in uh, Ohio City, and so that's 35 miles of there, and they'll get it to you. I love the Asian glazed chicken meal, mm -hmm. the buffalo mac and cheese, and the protein pancakes. Everything's pretty health conscious on their um, very nice on their menu. I can dig it. Cool. It's my sister's company. <laughs> oh, awesome. You got a promo Very code there? I do, yeah. If you uh, <laughs> use the promo code CS20, you'll get 20% off your first order. That's for Cuyahoga Sound, CS20. I thought it was for me. Oh, for Chuck Schilling. Yeah. Well, it can also be that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'll remember. <laughs> That's right. Cool. All right. Well, all thank right. you all, uh, the sponsors. Yeah, you guys are all awesome. Podcast. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad to be here. I'm gonna check out those places myself. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah, we're yeah, we're still young. This will be episode 22. We've got 23. Nothing, 23. I think this 23. is 23. Cool. Woohoo! Nothing but growing. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's get back to uh, the Cleveland music scene. Like um. Yeah. But, so you, you've had your hands in um, the this this program um, for giving local artists money you're showing people how to produce music and um i'm sure you've seen lots and lots of performances and different music uh um so recently is there any acts or, or singers or or groups that have really caught your attention with what they're doing cleveland mm -hmm. let's see i mean i'm like an apostle jones um jay wolf who i mentioned earlier for sure i'm really liking his music Odd Will, uh, Morning a Black Star, uh -huh. um, Church of Starry Wisdom, really like them. Um, who else did I hear lately? My friend's band Birth is they. I mean, they formed back in like 1998, but they're back on going on tour this year, and I recorded cool. a record for them. Um, they're playing. It, well, I guess I'm not going to say it fa uh, in time for our listeners, but the Happy Dog would have been last week if you're listening to this. <laughs> uh, but they will be playing again in Cleveland. They're, they just played in Buffalo. They're going out on a tour. They're going to play at our tower stage at um, All right. at the Waterloo neighborhood by Cleveland, presented by Cleveland Rocks, um, June 3rd, outdoors, free. Cool. Where, are, so where's the tower stage in relation to Beachland, which is... Down uh, the block. It's at East 156th and Waterloo. All right. So uh, just um, west of, of the Beachland on the cool. same side of the street in front of Six Shooter Coffee, by, right by the Millard Fillmore, and or maybe a little past there. And um, there's a giant tower there at the corner in a stage. It's a little courtyard. Um, 
who else do I like? I like a lot of bands. Brent Kirby. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, Ray Flanagan. That's episode like three and <laughs> seven, seven of this podcast was those two okay, guys. Okay, yeah, yeah, I like those guys. Jackie Warren, the salsa queen of Cleveland. I love her piano playing. Sammy mm-hmm. DeLeon, um, Dominic Farinacci, uh, Bobby Salvaggio, Chris Coles. Chris Coles out of oh, Akron. Man. Chris Coles is awesome. His Nine Lives Project is great. Uh, Anthony Taddeo, his group's Alabora, the Alba Trio. I recorded records for both Alabora and the Alba Trio. They're coming out this year. Um, Alabora is super amazing Italian language music that's like very, very groovy, uh, beautiful too. They have Amanda Powell as their singer, and she's the singer for um, Apollo's uh, Fire, the, the period orchestra. Um, who else am I listening to in town? I, have, I buy so many local records. The, the Sonderbombs. The Sonderbombs. Sonderbombs. They're, they're doing something good now. Grumpy Plum. Grumpy Plum is really cool. They're getting some traction. Um, Aaron Malik in terms of rap. Aaron Malik is sounding good. Um, let me see who else I was listening to that's got some rap out there. Uh, was something major. Nothing major. Nothing major like in their stuff. Um... I don't know. I'm, I'm probably missing some other stuff, awesome. but there's I've got uh, a month's worth of music. There's yeah. a, lot, a lot of good. <laughs> Thanks, it all depends yeah, on what style nice. you're into, you know. Um, I didn't mention any metal bands. My son plays death metal, so like he tells me about groups around that are really good that are metal. Um, I've got some friends that uh, are in a metal band, and they just put out a video that cracked me up. Uh, it was actually a cover song, but the band's called Critic City. Um, and they put out a cover of There's No Easy Way Out, which is from the Rocky IV soundtrack. And they, uh, for their music video, they used that deep fake on the original music video. And it's got like Rocky and Adrian. And oh, it's got man. the and band members <laughs> in their faces. And it was, I was checking that out today. So, Derek, that was, that, Derek, that was a great video. <laughs> cool. Yeah, lots, lots of good bands around here. And, uh, punk uh, detention is hitting it right now. They oh, yeah. they won the high school Love rock that. off mm-hmm. in 2019, and I saw them as the exhibition man this year, this past Saturday. They got some couple songs that are hitting satellite radio now. They're they're nice. getting some traction, cool. uh, liking what they're doing, and they got a lot of energy. Uh, oh, Benny Lava and the Guavas out of Akron. I love Benny Lava. Um, there's the, the Akron <laughs> Recording the Lava, Company Lava. is recording some really cool stuff down in Akron. Um, Knights, uh, Superior Sounds, recording a number mm-hmm. of bands up there that are really good. Um, there's a bunch of new stuff that's coming out soon that I think is going to be good. I'm working with a Colombian guitarist named Sebastian Albernos, and we're we did one record before, and we're doing another record together. He was doing pretty much. Uh, Straight ahead, modern melodic guitar jazz with a quartet before. And he's just thinking about, he told me he was thinking about with this next record we're going to do a different direction and um, in terms of production. And he's got some, before he wasn't doing any vocals, this time he's got a singer on the record. Uh, he's going in a little bit more, adding some pop and funk and hip-hop to the jazz mix and uh, kind of some of the, Bands were inspired by for that are like Hiatus Coyote. Oh, yeah. I like them a lot. So that kind of stuff. That is some of the most unique music I've ever heard. Good stuff. Yeah, and it's Mm. inspirational. So, you know, get those kind of Dilla-type beats plugged into some, on a live drum kit, plugged into Mm. some jazz funk with crazy vocals. Mm -hmm. So that's the next record I'm going to make with Sebastian Albernos. And uh, he's a young guy from... Like I said, Columbia, I moved up to here maybe five, six years ago to Cleveland. And um, we recorded his last record in the Bop Stop. Sometimes I go there during the day and take advantage of that beautiful piano. And they have a hand yeah. organ in there, too. Um, who else am I doing a record with this year that, that's going somewhere? I just recorded with an artist, Brian Hetrick, who in the 90s was the lead singer for a band called Geronimo's Cadillac. Um, saxophone player from that band, Geronimo's Cadillac, is in another band I work with a lot called DLHR, and they do more funk, soul, Afrobeat, reggae, 
uh, inspired music, a little bit of R and B, um, and then I don't know, lot, lots of different groups. I got a bunch of different projects. Kevin McCarthy, I'm making a new record with Kevin McCarthy. Um, he's a singer songwriter, but we're doing a, a a record. So we've been recording some solo acoustic guitar and vocal stuff, but then we're doing this record that has more of like a Van Morrison type arrangements, mm -hmm. horns and a whole really cool rhythmic unit in the group. And, um, I know I'm forgetting some stuff because I'm I'm a, I'm working on like tons of different <laughs> stuff. And since leaving my full time day job to be a freelancer or work for yourself, you have to do a million different things. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm. I use my make sure my calendar is up to date so I can make sure I'm in the right place on the right day. <laughs> well, I'm glad we you're able to fit us. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. I, I, like I was today, I went to Music Saves on Collinwood and was just cleaning and and getting that ready, and then was um, taking these prints and all these photos for this gallery show right next door and getting that together and. That wrapped up in enough time for me to get over there as the beach land was starting to fill up with people. They, I guess they have two shows tonight that are, that are. there was a line outside before oh. they opened. So cool. It's happening down there. Cool. I, I love I, I love the beach and that's my favorite venue uh, on the east side, maybe all of Cleveland. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect hub for local artists. Yeah. It's like a rite of passage. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good place to play. They're very supportive. Mm -hmm. um, now that they got their kitchen back open, there's good food there. Mm, cool. Um, Can't wait to taste the new stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, One of the first times that we like played on a stage together, we were playing in a, a Chili Peppers tribute. And, yeah. Uh, I, uh, and I'm friends with like some of the people that, that run that, and they let us film our promo video on the big stage there yeah i made a record on that stage once back when i was in uh right out of college the first time when i got my uh first got my associate degree in recording um i recorded a band up there on the stage we closed the, put them on the stage in the ballroom and closed the curtains to uh, make it less echoey yeah oh, wow but i've recorded a lot of live shows there too and some of them some of them in uh, national shows that i got mm -hmm. hired to record i recorded bernie warrell from p funk in there oh. for his show which was absolutely amazing i'm a huge p funk yeah. fan and a huge bernie warrell fan and you know uh, he's uh, uh, his music is getting another resurgence now that all the kids have been into talking heads for the past couple of years the resurgence mm -hmm. of the talking heads and his stuff in there i mean his he's he invented half the language of the synthesizer that yeah. guy's just the most amazing. I recorded Sun Ra's orchestra in there. So those are a couple of the national groups. I and then I recorded a ton of, ton of bands in there. The nice thing about the Beachland is they had a, they used to have this room with all their splits in the, in the back corner of the stage, so I could have a room and take all the multi-track out of their <laughs> side there. And they always have a board that has like direct out, so I could do a multi-track pretty easily in that place. And I like it there. I like it there, and I like the people. Um, a, a number of my graduates. Former students work there, um, sound people and booking people and uh, production managers over the years, bartenders. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, um, this has really been great to have yeah, you in thank here, you. man. Okay. Um, we're going to wrap it up here soon. Is there anything that you, you'd like to to say last second? Anything to say go to Cleveland? Cavs. Yeah. Go, go Cavs. Go Cavs. <laughs> All right, go, go Cavs. Cavs. Uh, everybody in Cleveland, uh, if you're making music, I support you. Um, and, uh, I'm interested in making your record too. And besides that, um, look me up at one of these places. I'm out there. I got a website, mm-cm.co for mixing and stuff like that. I've been distributing records for people through, uh, a label I set up just to distribute local artists called Tighten Up Records. I record on location and in the studio, and I got probably the coolest on location set up in the city with all kinds of crazy mics. Like I said, I'm recording an orchestra every week. I got enough yeah. to do a whole orchestra. <laughs> and then I'm looking to support people through these nonprofits, particularly Cleveland Rocks Past, Present, and Future. Check that out. And I'm um, I'm available to talk through that that platform, that that nonprofit. And and if you're looking to be a supporter of Cleveland music. Make a donation to Cleveland Rocks Past, Present, and Future, and we'll make sure that funds and support go to local music and the whole scene and improving it. 
and uh, also the Kaboom Collective if you want to support young people getting trained for professions in the entertainment industry. Nice. Excellent, David. Right. Cool. Thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you. We have one more question that we always ask <laughs> All right. our, uh, our guests at the end. Do you have a movie recommendation for us? Oh, yeah. Brazil. Have you seen Brazil? No. It's 1984, Terry Gilliam, the guy who did Fisher King and Time Bandits. All right. Marlon, uh, who, who's it? Oh, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro is the lead actor. Brazil. Brazil. All right. It's... It's amazing. Cool. All right. I love, I love <laughs> yeah. It. I love it. I love something I've never heard of before. It's it. We, I, me and my girlfriend always make a night of it. Whatever, like our guests say, like even if we've seen it before, it's, it's sometimes it's terrible, and that's still awesome. <laughs> I'm glad that came up to me because when you ask for like, can you recommend a song or a movie? I want to mm-hmm. tell you twenty. You know, right. I wanna, like cool. oh, this like I said with the local bands. You know, cool. you can give us one more movie. <laughs> <laughs> one more movie. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh. I've seen so many movies. I'm trying to think of something that you wouldn't have seen. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it it's is called, yes. called <laughs> Faust by Jan Svankmeyer, J-A-N, Faust. It's a, he's a Czech filmmaker. It combines live action puppeteering and claymation in one movie. It's about the, the, the classic novel Faust, the, the you know, the, uh, sell your soul to the devil in exchange for all the knowledge in the universe and it doesn't work out when you do that you yeah. know, it's, a, it's the old crossroads story <laughs> the blues you know robert yeah. johnson whatnot cool, but cool. uh faust it's an amazing movie cool i'm a i love claymation so that, that <laughs> is per- happening thank awesome. you so much nice. you're welcome <laughs> All right, David Kennedy, thanks again for coming on. Thank you and both. For yeah. the Cuyahoga Sound Podcast, I'm Evan Stone. I'm Chuck Schilling. Peace. Peace.